and welcome back. We are finally back together again for a uh, Concussion Talk and Phoenix Concussion Recovery Podcast. I'm here with Nick Mercer. My name is Lauren Zayax. I'm a co-founder of Phoenix Concussion Recovery. You can find us at phoenixconcussionrecovery.com. How are you going, Nick? Oh, good. Thanks for thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to talk about your uh, upcoming if it, conference presentation at the uh, where's where? Can you just tell us where that is? And what yeah, so it is? we're really excited. We're going to be presenting for the first time um, at the ACRM annual conference. Chelsea and I, my uh, former coworker Chelsea Brown, and I will be presenting on Wednesday, October 3rd, and our presentation's at 11.15 in the morning. So if you haven't signed up yet for ACRM, you, there's still time. You can just go to acrm.org, and we're going to be in Dallas this year, so we're really excited about it. So ACRM is the American Congress of Rehabilitative Medicine, right? Correct. Is it only for, only, only for... <laughs> Only for doctors or for physios or who's the No, form? it's actually the uh, largest allied health conference, I believe, in the country. Um, I don't want to overspeak on that, but I, I know for sure it's the largest allied health conference in the country. So it's for OTs, PTs, speech-language pathologists, doctors. Anybody who practices medicine is welcome to come to um, this allied health meeting. Cool. Awesome. That, that, sounds, that sounds obviously very inclusive. I think it was in... Toronto a few years ago or something like that. Like, I don't know why American Congress was in Toronto, but that's what I thought <laughs> That I saw. happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, you're going, you're going to Dallas next week, are you? Yeah. We are going to present two posters, and we're also going to do this big presentation that we're really excited about. Nice. Well, so what is the presentation? And give us a taste of what you guys actually talk about. Yeah, so we are presenting our new treatment paradigm. So the name of the um, talk is Primitive Reflex Integration, a new treatment paradigm for concussive injuries. And essentially, we're taking an old school treatment method that was used in pediatrics for kids with ADD, ADHD, learning disorders, vision dysfunction, and we are applying it to the concussion population. And we're getting really exciting outcomes. So in the last year and a half, uh, we've worked with about 290 people with primitive reflex integration therapy. And that's allowed us to create pretty strong protocols. Um, 290 is a good number for the concussion population, especially in such a short time. And it's allowed us to tweak these exercises to get the best possible outcome. So now we're um, starting to do some research, we're starting to publish, and we're starting to present at conferences trying to get more people to do this therapy. So what is the primitive, primitive reflex integration? What, mm -hmm. is that, what does that entail? So primitive reflexes are a normal part of development early on. They help us travel through the birth canal and then they help us stay alive and start to develop in the first year of life. So if you've ever put your finger in a baby's hand and they grab onto it and you, they think, you think they're holding your hand, right? That's actually a palmar reflex. Or um, when the baby does that cute little thing where they yawn and turn their head and their arms go in that fence or yeah. pose, that's an ATNR reflex. And what should happen is um, in that first year of life for most of them, we start to stand up against gravity and we start to walk. And these reflexes actually have to go away in order for the more important reflexes to develop, like our writing reflexes, our postural reflexes, the things that eventually let us sit still in class and use our eyes and have cognition and mood regulation and things like that. And so in the old school way of using these reflexes, the kids didn't develop properly. Maybe they skipped crawling or maybe they had chronic ear infections. And so they end up with these mood regulation issues, sensory processing disorders, ADD, ADHD, and there has been therapy for a long time to reintegrate that. But what we're finding is that there's some damage occurring during the, uh, during the concussive event, whether that's from the frontal lobe itself or from the brainstem, and that causes these reflexes to re-emerge or to become disinhibited. So they should always be present but inhibited by our brain. They come back again after the concussion and they wreak havoc on our system. And they can cause issues with our balance, our coordination, hand-eye coordination, visual tracking, dizziness, motion intolerance, um, trouble with concentration and focus, reading, writing, and they can also cause fatigue and difficulties with mood regulation. So essentially, that describes concussed people, which is why we started yeah. looking at it. Um, and then we do these exercise protocols over between two to six weeks, and those reflexes will go away, and the higher level processing will start to work better. 
Um, and then we do advanced therapies as needed instead of starting with advanced therapy. So it's been really exciting so far. Um, the therapy is not that difficult to complete. And so um, it's relatively easy to disseminate the information, which also makes it exciting because the risk is low to the patient, the benefits are really high, and it's not a burden for the providers to learn. So we're, we're trying to get as many people on board as we possibly can while still being able to control the message. Um, if you don't do the exercises right, they don't work. So the little details really matter with these exercises um, as you progress through the protocol. Wow. So I see. It's a lot like in the football players, and we're seeing a few things like that fencing posture you're talking about. That's uh -huh. where your arm kind of comes up with your head almost, or, or something like that. Like that's where your flex kind of not flex, but you tense up and your arm comes up. Is that so? Those postures, like right when the accident happens, yeah, that's a little bit of a different thing. Um, that has to do with the actual brainstem itself and um, damage that's occurring above or below certain levels. So they'll, they'll go into that posture where they go really rigid. That doesn't yeah. happen all that often. Um, that's okay. a pretty significant injury when that occurs. Okay. I mean, it does happen, but yeah. um, these would be like, if you've ever been in the car with somebody and every time they turn their head to the left, the car drifts to the left because yeah. their arm moves with their head. Yeah, yeah. Or you're riding a bike and every time you turn to the left, your bike kind of goes to the left and you hit the yeah. gravel. Yeah. That would be a sign of an ATNR reflex or okay. um, a kid who has to bend forward and lean over the page and they sort of, they turn their head in their upper body and they have to write leaned over instead of being able to sit up tall at their desk. Or some patients will describe, ever since my head injury, I can't wear jeans or leggings anymore. I can't have anything tight on my legs because they have yeah. these sensory processing issues. Um, so it's things that are a little bit more functional based that people are just noticing these little hiccups in their daily life. Patients will describe that their handwriting is more messy after the head injury. That could be an ATNR reflex as well. Um, people will describe a lot of neck tone or tightness and stiffness in their neck. And both the STNR reflex and the TLR reflex can increase postural tone. So we start to integrate these reflexes every time they move their arms, their neck and back don't have to fire and that uh, pain goes away. Now, that being said, if you have a whiplash injury and you have an orthopedic injury, primitive reflexes say. aren't going to fix your, your orthopedic injury. I was going to say, injury. a lot of people find, like, a lot of times yeah. questions like diagnose, all co-diagnose or misdiagnosed as, as a whiplash injury. Right, right. So we, what I tell my patients is primitive reflexes are not going to fix your whiplash injury, right? But I'm going to help the therapist who's working on your whiplash injury because if I can decrease postural tone from abnormal movement patterns, it helps them accomplish their job and it helps them get your whiplash injury under control. So they sort of work together, but I would never say that primitive reflex therapy fixes everything. Um, I just, what I describe to my patients is what we want to do is um, we want to fix the foundation of your house and then we'll worry about fixing the walls. So if the foundation right. is always cracked, it doesn't matter how much cosmetic work we do because these little pieces will be there. So yeah. we do the primitive reflexes first, we fix the foundation and then whatever's left over, we focus on that afterwards. Okay. I've, I've mm -hmm. noticed even like when I brush my teeth, I try to use my left hand to brush my teeth because my left side is weaker, but I find my right arm kind of comes up a lot, like just not to shoulder right, but it comes up like, and I kind of gripping in front of my body with my, I just brush, yeah. teeth, brush my teeth right with my left hand, my right hand, it kind of comes up and clenches or clenches, but yet gets sewn in. Is that, that's, when you're using your left hand, your right arm elevates and yeah, comes across yeah, your body. Yeah. yeah, I'll send you these exercises. <laughs> oh, yeah. And for my writing, my writing is also terrible now. <laughs> I'll send you. I'll send you the exercise protocol. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. That's a pretty classic sign. That's that's actually pretty significant. You don't see that all that often, but your head injury yeah, was, was very bigger. different than what yeah. I typically treat. So yeah. I mean, that makes sense. But yeah. <laughs> Cool. So what else are you going to, are you going to see any, anything you look forward to seeing in the conference? Any, like any presentations you want to see or you're looking forward to, are there any concussion topics you will have done about there? Yeah. I mean, there's a whole uh, section of this conference on traumatic brain injury. Nice. So it's a, almost a little bit overwhelming. I'm going to have to just pour through the manual once I get down there and plan out my days. Uh, yeah. But there's um, different tracks. So if you're not interested in head injury and you somehow stumbled across this podcast and you were going to ACRM, there's other things available that, that you could look into. Uh, but for me, I'm probably going to stay in the brain injury track and fill yeah. my days with, with things. And I'm excited to learn from 
different professionals. Like I'm hoping to get some courses that are run by OTs and some courses that are run by SLPs instead of like just getting a PT perspective all the time. I'm, I'm excited that there's going to be a variety of people at this conference instead of the same message that you, you kind of hear when you only stay in your own bucket. Are, do you think perm reflexes are associated with also with speech language and speech language pathology? Yes, so absolutely. My, my speech is messed up, but so like, was that, is all of that is perm perimeter reflex? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I don't know, because I don't know really enough about no, your not, case, not and me. I'm not, not, not asking yeah, yeah, yeah. For, <laughs> I think you probably have treatment here. But... <laughs> yeah, <but it's... laughs> um, I th so in the old school way of doing primitive reflexes, I believe it would be OTs that would actually do most of the therapy. Okay. Um, but, and I think it just kind of depends. Like once you get into pediatrics, I think the lines get really blurry between the different specialties. Yeah. Um, I think that because the, the brain stem controls all of these cranial nerves, the ones that control your speech, the ones that control your eyes, your inner yeah. ears, the section of our brain stem that controls the primitive reflexes where they're housed. I think that there has to be a, a common denominator between all of them. It just doesn't make sense that there wouldn't be a piece that sort of fits a little bit and then you have to do more therapy to fit the, um, the bigger deficit. So like if your eyes are the primary concern at the end of the day, yeah. you're still going to have to do some vision therapy afterwards to correct those deficits, right? right. But it, you're not going to need to do 57 types of therapy. We could just pick something that helps that brainstem activity organize a little bit better. And then you kind of see where the chips fall after that. And then you go to the different therapies. People with more severe injuries, you know, they're going to need speech language pathology for swallowing and for the, the way that they speak or their word accessing. So I think that it kind of depends on the person and, and how significant the injury is versus like there's one thing for everybody kind of kind of thing. Okay, so, uh, so I had a good question, but now I forget what it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. Um, oh yeah, and I noticed. Is there are there like neuroscientists, neuroscientists, are they there? You wanted that you would think would be interested in this research that you hoping to see or. I'm I'm really hopeful that we could get some neural psychologists on board yeah. because so the way that the primitive reflexes work is that as our frontal lobe develops, the, the part of our frontal lobe called the prefrontal cortex is actually where the inhibition comes from. So we have all these really exciting pathways in our brain that work in feedback loops. And that's where a neural psychologist and a neurologist would be really important because, I mean, there's limitations in, in my knowledge and my practice, right? And so yeah. having somebody who really understands how all those feedback loops work and, and why the pieces of the puzzle start to fit together um, and having them be involved in research, it would also be really interesting to see some of these different fMRI scans or spec scans where they're able to look at activation patterns and blood perfusion because what if we could find objectively okay, there's an area of less perfusion in the frontal lobe, we do these exercises, and then the perfusion improves. So then you'd be able to have objective findings versus just people are getting better, and people are feeling better, and their mood regulation is better. It'd be really cool to have a big network do research on our protocols to see why do they work, and how can we make them even better so that people get better um, more thoroughly and faster. Cool. Yeah. That, sound, that sounds like a, I wish I was in... Dallas, I just go see you, your talk and maybe countless others. Who knows? <laughs> but but um, yeah. So, do you have anything else you you were hoping to discuss the conference, or anything else you wanted to mention about your your presentation, your presentation, or the conference itself? Yes. Yeah, so or we'll be um, we'll have two posters that will be up as well. So we have one poster on our primitive reflex case study. Um, we're presenting them on Monday afternoon, but the posters will be up uh, from Sunday night until Wednesday night. So people can peruse everybody's research posters. I'm sure there will be hundreds of them. Um, and then there will also be a poster for us on our uh, vision and vestibular therapy um, protocol. So our flow chart that we have of the way that we practice um, at, at my old clinic and then at my new clinic as far as like the vision and vestibular therapy being integrated. And that's the one that we are working on um, our IRB with one of the big universities on the East Coast for our vision and vestibular therapy um, integration program. And then there's another university on the East Coast that we're working with for our outcomes from our primitive reflex screening tool that we've been using for the last year and a half. So um, we're presenting on our case studies and then we've got some research going on that, that are in the IRB process. And then, uh, We'll be presenting our big course on Wednesday. So. Jeez, you're a busy, busy woman. 
So, uh, yeah, <laughs> you can see where you're, you see where you're tired. Yeah, so. Uh, I'm tired all the time. <laughs> And uh, I would say I would say thank you very much, but it's your it's your podcast, so we'll, I'll let you thank you, Lauren, and I'll let you sign off and do your thing. Well, thanks so much for having me here and and letting me come back. And I'm sorry to the listeners that there was a long gap between our last ones. Um, and uh, you can go ahead and visit phoenixconcussionrecovery.com to find out more about concussions and different types of treatments to look for if you're feeling a little bit lost. And you can also follow me on Twitter at LZ Concussion. And I try to post. I've been a little bit slacking this summer, so I apologize. But I'll try to post more articles as we come up and let you guys know what we're up to as well. And, Nick, you just keep on healing and doing great, man. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren.